morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Legal, lawful, constitutional tender. It is what we do, and what a crazy week last week was. This week, more of the same. We'll keep you all in the know. 800 That is our toll-free number. Wealth insurance. It is what we do. You know, when the central bankers think somehow they can fix a debt problem by printing up more debt and talking about quarter point rate hikes or, or quantitative easing or tools in the toolkit. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Because at the end of the day, it really does come down to economics 101. And it says the days of fiat number uh, money, the days are getting numbered. Right? Look at all of the attacks that you're seeing on cash, uh, all of the things about uh, bank accounts, and we're seeing all these banks uh, getting hit for money laundering, and now the the arrest of uh, the Huawei executive, the telecom exec, the VP in Canada. Today, stories breaking illegal payments. Uh, possibly going through British banks, all that. But listen, they're all criminal organizations. That's why you need to have some insurance. And then we're talking about gold and silver. That is where we come in. All American Gold is the website, whatever. You, you can do it online. You can call on the phone. You can do whatever you do on the phone. You can do it online. You want to you wanna pick up, you can pick up. If, if, if you want to pay by check, you can pay by check. We got all the options out there for you. Allamericangold.com. The Dow is down 400 and about 450 points right now. Uh, the S&P has broken. The Dow broke 24,000. Uh, now at 23.9, S&P broke, broke 2,600. It's down 42 points. The NASDAQ broke 7,000, right? It's down 67 points. Uh, crude oil is down today, yesterday or Friday. I was off on Friday. Uh, I'll, I'll update you there. We did have uh, news out of OPEC that everybody kind of celebrated on Friday, gave crude a little rally. I didn't get it because that cut wasn't nearly enough. And it's OPEC. They don't even follow their own cuts that they have. Uh, the the crude oil down uh, 75 cents today. Gold and silver. Look, what do you see? Gold kind of hit a new top of the range here. We we could never really get above that 1250 level. We did it uh, on Friday. Uh, right now, gold and silver just watching. Right, just watching. Uh, matter of fact, I'll say this: we'd be at at, at uh, higher highs here today. But word out of England, uh, the Brexit deal falling apart. They're not going to vote. They're not even going to vote on it. Uh, now there's fears of the hard Brexit. All this noise. They're going to get something done at the last minute, like they always do. Uh, but but nonetheless, uh, that that's put a little bit of a damper. And, and really, now I mean. Uh, Gold's at $1,247. It's actually right this second. Uh, it is down $0.30. Cent. Uh, so so just uh, I'll keep you updated here. Uh, the Dow has started to move aggressively just in the last, oh, 20 minutes uh, to the downside. And and uh, I, I'm looking for the biggest news came out of China again uh, remember, we're supposed to have this trade truce. Qualcomm winning, and I think they've lost these fights uh, in other countries. Won a court decision in China this morning, banning the sale now of Apple. Not all Apple iPhones, but certain ones where Qualcomm said, "Hey, Apple ripped us off." And and uh, apparently the Chinese have agreed with them, so pressure on Apple today. By the way, pressure uh, on the banks today as that yield curve continues to flatten. And, and we'll kind of try to bring you up to speed on all of those things if we have time today. Uh, GDP out of Japan 
uh, also hit this, also taking uh, some more, again, everybody's slowing down. And I know you still get, well, you know, we haven't quite seen the signs. I, I don't know what signs they need to see. Uh, now they're saying that the Japanese economy, third quarter GDP, far worse than initial estimates for it. They had uh, contracted initially at one negative 1.2% 1. in the third quarter. Their revision came out down 2.5% uh, is the official uh, number. That's two out of the last three quarters. So technically, Japan has avoided the recession because you have to have two quarters in a row. Uh, so two out of the last three quarters now in Japan have been negative. Uh, that that was driving gold uh, at while we were sleeping. Uh, and, and then, of course, like I said, news of uh, they were supposed to vote in Parliament in and England. And here's the funny thing. No one actually thought it was going to pass. It was at no chance of passing uh, but she can't, Theresa May, the PM there, the I guess the president, if you will, of England, she canceled the vote because apparently it was going to be a slaughter. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the riots in Paris, which spread to Belgium and the Netherlands. You know, I, and I, again, I haven't watched every single second of TV, but you notice how you haven't really seen it? Have you noticed that? A thousand people were arrested over the weekend. Hundreds of people hurt. I mean, they were storming the Bastille. They were almost had to shut down the Eiffel Tower. I mean, huge riot. Mainstream media doesn't want you to see it because what, what are they rioting about? Right, all of those liberal type policies. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Did you see the president has signed off on a seven hundred and fifty billion dollar uh, defense spending bill? I don't. You know, obviously it's got to go through Congress and all that, uh, but the spending unrelenting. Uh, there was a, an article out over the weekend, and. And in very, very appropriate was the president shrugging off concerns. Now, again, uh, this, I, I don't know. Uh, I was, obviously, I wasn't there, but this is coming from a source that I trust. That, hey, normally if they put it out there, uh, this is what went down. Talking about ballooning national debts. Now, we are, I think, less than about. About 150 billion dollars now uh, from 22 trillion. Uh, it's going to be real close where we end the year. It'll be right near 22 trillion by by the end of January. We'll be over uh, the 22 trillion mark, and by the end of this year, we'll be over 23 trillion. Actually, by the end of next year, we'll be pushing 24 trillion. Uh, but people were talking about okay, you're you're starting to get. Even with the CBO's ridiculous assumption about GDP growth and unemployment and inflation, I mean, you talk about scenarios that really uh, have no chance of succeeding, yet they put them out there anyway. Even with those, the debt picture continues to worsen. But they said during a national... Uh, it was some kind of a, a advisory meeting with the senior staff, right? So that would have been uh, Kelly, who's resigning, Mnuchin, guys like that, right? The 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 uh, important guys on his team in 2017. So this is a year ago, and they were talking about obviously what the tax cuts and and you know re- remember when they talked about those. And it's not just Trump. Every president lies. Right? And really, uh, they get people to come out and, and lie ad infinitum over and over. Like, if you lie enough, people will actually think you're telling the truth, I guess. 
So when you think that they said that we're going to have 4% GDP growth, that they said, oh, well, for one quarter, right? But no, they wanted us to believe we're going to have 4% growth for a long time, and then we're going to have 3% growth for a long time. I mean, we got one quarter of four, one quarter of three, that's it. So they knew that this was going to cause even bigger problems on the debt. They're saying, uh, they're quoting the president as saying, yeah, but I won't be here. And uh, we presented with a chart and graphics layout of the numbers showing the hockey stick spike in national debt. Remember, they used that. Remember Harry Figgy bankruptcy 1995 when he had the chart with the hockey stick of debt? What you guys and what I didn't know is we're still at the real low end of the hockey stick. Yeah, yeah, it's going up, but I thought we were much farther up the stick. We weren't. We're just now starting to get into it. And it said that they showed that the stick was not in the distant future. Uh, the alleged incident from two years ago was uh, the Daily Beast is the one who first broke it from a source who was in the room. And again, you're going to probably hear some of this because, right, a lot of people have been leaving the president's cabinet, and sometimes the president says things that aren't nice about them, and they like to return the favor. Uh, but again, this is not from that source. I got another source. Uh, is is out there with this that I trust a lot more than that. Uh, an, an, another anonymous source says that they've never heard the president one time talk about the debt. Now, that's a great way. I, listen, I, if you just live in denial, then I guess it's going to be okay. Listen, we don't have that option. I wish we did. Wouldn't it be great? Oh, yeah, here comes all the bills. Here comes all the, the credit card bills, the car, uh, the monthly car payments, the, the credit card payments, the mortgage payment, the insurance payment, the health care payment. You know what? Let's just ignore it. Let's just not talk about it at all. But, but I guess what I don't know, and I don't care, whether or not this meeting took place, didn't take place. Here's what we do know, is that the government knows. They've got the charts, they got the graphs, because I was worried, because I was thinking, you know what, maybe they don't know how to do math. I don't know. Right, I sit there, I do this show day after day, week after week, month after month, and I tell you exactly what's going to happen. And for, you know, five months, six months, nine months, sometimes a year, you would think I was wrong. But then again, when the reality actually sets in, all of a sudden, right, I guess I wasn't wrong after all. We, we talked about what China was going to do. They've done exactly what I told you. We talked about the tax cuts, what they would do, exactly what I've told you. We talked about the national debt. Listen, they're already saying, that, oh, yeah, it's going to be a trillion. That's not even the real number. Right? That, that's the fake number. That's the, the pretend number. Well, we don't have to pay all our bills. <laughs> then this would only be this much. They're saying that current forecast are too rosy for the predictions from the Trump White House and that we're actually not getting a very realistic picture as to how bad the problem is going to become. Now, you're starting to see it now. Are you nervous? Are you worried about Wall Street? You should be. I, I hope you, you you have the ability to protect yourself 
Because remember, what is Wall Street? What about the bond market, right? We hear about yield curve inversions. You don't have to necessarily understand it. Because what you do know is everybody that talks about it says, man, this is bad. And, of course, for us, the one thing that matters is what happens when these mar- these signs, again, these are signs. And I love it. I listen to people, even this morning. They don't fail in dusting off somebody. doesn't matter. Uh, they're going to find somebody who tells, well, you know, the, but I, I, the markets are going to recover. And and they're they're overreacting to fake news. Yeah, fake news. No, what the fake news is is the news that you were trying to tell everybody for the reason why they're, they're now rallying to begin with. That was the fake news. What we're left with is what is real. And very simply, they missed priced debt. Right? That was how did they fix it? And again, remember, and I, of course, I tell you, they didn't really fix anything. That's the problem, right? It, it, it's kind of like, well, we, we've got a leak, and, and it's leaking right here in the bathroom. So they, you fix the wall, right? You go in and you replace the drywall of the ceiling, right? You paint it, and you make it all look new again. And the next time someone, what, takes a shower or or takes a bath, whatever, all of a sudden it starts leaking again. And again, you go up there and you replace the drywall. You're not actually fixing what's actually broken. And this is essentially what the central banks did because they wanted to protect the illusion that the money that we're working so hard for actually has value. It doesn't. You see it every day, right? Why do they lie about inflation? Because they have to. Because if they told you the truth, you would figure out that this money's not even worth holding. So they fixed the ceiling. And by fixing the ceiling, what did they do? They missed price debt. They took, bought, created $4 trillion out of thin air, bought a bunch of debt off the bank's balance sheets, and did all this, all this phony baloney of quantitative easing, one, two, three, and twist and retwist. I mean, they had so many tools on the toolkit. And then claimed that they fixed it. And they started raising interest rates. And I'll just tell you this. The Trump tax cut bought them an extra year and a half. It did. Because first you had the talk of it, right? Then everyone got excited. Then the actual tax cut itself. And, and allowed the Fed to raise rate at least four or five more times than they should have. And we had all of these fake signs. Right, and, and all of these, and, and why I say they are fake because they were built on lies. And we are never going to get four percent GDP growth ever. I mean, we we were lucky that we got the one quarter. I mean, it was only it wasn't like it was four point eight, right? It was four point two. We are never going to get three percent growth. I mean, we got three five right now. Everyone even knows. Listen, we're not going to have three percent growth this quarter. It's not happening. My question is: Is how close to two is it going to be? And the first quarter of next year, the question really is: How far below two is it going to be? Over the weekend, our cashing came out acted like he heard my show because he said, hey, by the end of the year, the Federal Reserve is going to be talking about rate cuts, not rate hikes. And then this morning, uh, another one of these, uh, I'll, I'll call them the old guard of Wall Street, 
was was out this morning talking about uh, the how, what the Dow is going to do, do, saying it could fall as much as 15 percent, and that was Paul Tudor Jones uh, or more before rebounding. Right? It's always going to there's always going to be a rebound eventually. And you start looking at the bond yield curve. And now it's inverting. Why? We just had 4.2% GDP growth, 3.5% GDP growth. Why is it inverting? Because the longer end of the bond market, the 10-year note, the 30-year note, but those people got to hold it for 10 years. You know what they see? They see this hockey stick of debt, and they're worried. So the 10-year note is crashing downwards as the Federal Reserve continually raises rates to push the short-term notes upward. And this is the conundrum now that we have where nobody wants to be in the stock market anymore. Right? I mean, think about it. Now, I just heard a woman come out this morning whose company two weeks ago was saying profits were going to grow double digits again next year. Come out and say, oh, it's fine. You know, we're going to get 8% profit growth. I'm like, well, what happened to double digits? But I'm going to tell you right now, they're not even going to get that. Eight's even too high. This is the problem. I hope you're getting ready. I want you to have a great Christmas, but I want you to have a great Christmas this year, next year, five years from now, ten years from now. That means you got to prepare today. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Tomorrow is the birthday of someone relatively unknown to a younger generation of Americans. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was born to a simple Russian family in 1918, just after his father died in service to Russia in World War I. As a child, Solzhenitsyn dreamed of being a writer. Little did he know that he would one day be one of the most effective and well-known critics of the Soviet Union. He graduated from university with a degree in mathematics and physics, but soon was pulled into service for Russia in World War II. This brought the beginning of Alexander's life-changing writings. In 1945, he was arrested for writing letters to a friend in which he was critical of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. Solzhenitsyn spent the next eight years of his life in prisons, labor camps, and in exile. He was eventually allowed to resettle in central Russia, where he taught mathematics and again began to write. His first two novels were based on his own experiences in Stalin's brutal network of prisons. In 1964, post-Khrushchev Russia brought more cultural activity restrictions, and Solzhenitsyn lost his government-approved publishing privileges. He then printed his works through an underground network. Even as his work was suppressed in Russia, the international community was clamoring for his writings. In 1970, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, following the 1968 publishing of two of his books. Then in 1973, his famous work, The Gulag Archipelago, an historical record of the Stalin-era Soviet labor camps, earned him a charge of treason and permanent exile from the Soviet Union. He traveled to the United States, where he continued to write until the fall of the Soviet Union and the restoration of his Russian citizenship. I strongly recommend that you read his work. Phyllis Schlafly kept his books in her library and knew the value in keeping stories like this man's alive. Despite what Democrats and the media want you to believe, extreme left-wing Democrat socialists like the newly elected Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are simply communists in disguise. Liberals want to erase the failed and bloody history of Marxism, but don't let them. We must study history and the brave men and women who have sacrificed so much for truth. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Whether it's the vision of our founding fathers, the courage of our veterans, the moral compass of Christopher Columbus, or the fortitude of presidents like Lincoln and Reagan, the truth of history should not be undercut by liberal ideology. At Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, we honor history even as we look to the future. Join us at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. Backward. 
Dow's down 400 plus. Uh, it, it's early. Uh, the problem is, uh, could it go down 800, 1,000? Could it rally back? Could it? Uh, who knows? And the the thing that that I find interesting is it falls on real data points. Uh, as an example, we talked about Japan uh, two out of the last three quarters now negative GDP, or I'm sorry, ch- Japan, China, or no, that was Japan. I had to write j- Japan with two out of three quarters negative growth. Then we also have reports economic data out of China, right? More slowing. The EU, the whole EU now, turning into a huge mess. And, of course, uh, issues out of Great Britain, the pound, the the, uh, the British pound, falling to the lowest levels approaching now in two years. And if it breaks uh, if it breaks a little more here, it'll be the lowest levels in decades. Uh, it's right on the cusp here. Uh, it, it, the dollar actually is up almost, uh, almost 40 base points, back to 97. But again, not because of good economic data. We, we've had this whole little false front here of this strong dollar. Right? Remember, the dollar was strong because we were putting tariffs on people. It's ridiculous. And I'll come back to Economics 101. Uh, gold just hit on chains now, getting ready to go. Uh, I would not be surprised to see gold uh, end in positive territory today because uh, the news just isn't good. None of this is good. Listen, we live in a global economy now. We have to accept it. I know we wish we didn't, but they gave it all away. They gave it all away. Why? Because they wanted to go more into debt. They wanted to sell, right? They needed China to become a powerhouse so it could load up on U.S. debt, and they did for a while. Now they're not. Remember, I was talking about central bank gold buying. I mean, the numbers coming in are incredible. 650. I just saw a forecast over the weekend. Another one said, no, more like 750 metric tons from central banks. 20 years ago, they'd sell 500 metric tons. No one even ever. I don't remember last time, you know, 20 years ago, no one bought gold. No central bank did. Now, if they're not buying it, they're repatriating it. Right? Countries, we've had countries that never bought gold before, at least in the modern era, buying it. Right? Buying gold. Hungary, Poland, right? Just to name a few. There's a lot more. All of the gold repatriation that's happening. Because they already know there's going to be... Listen, the world doesn't come to an end when the dollar ends. And don't think, you know, and here's the problem. A, a, a lot of people out there think that, that, first of all, they think the dollar is backed by gold. People out there still believe that. Others believe, oh, that will never happen. It always happens. Heck, it's happened here. Right, a bunch of time. Really, when you think about it, like Confederate money, right, went to zero. When we went off the gold standard, what happened? They just took it from you. Turn it all in. And I know that, that I, I actually believe it's going to happen again. And when we talk about there's all types of gold, there is. You know, you could buy uh, gold flakes, right? You you could buy uh, unrefined gold. You could be like the the guys on Gold Rush and up there in the Yukon and digging it out of the ground. You want to get an example of how expensive it is? Watch that show. Gold is not easy to get. And they're getting ready. Listen, the, the this fiat dollar's going to end. They all do. It's not news. It's not. It's not even shocking. All these guys that write their books and they love to write books, don't they? All of them love to write books. 
They all tell you. Oh, yeah, it's going to end. Everyone just doesn't know when. I've got a good idea. Right? I, I don't think it goes 10 years. Because there's so much. I mean, we're going to be over $40 trillion in debt. And that's assuming nothing horrible happens. And we're sitting here and we're watching all of these things happen. And and it, it's going to be, because, you know, it's the sign of the times, right? It's probably going to be some type of an electronic credit. Anybody who had any cash of any size laying around, right? We've seen it, right? They use the Russians or the Greeks, right? There are all these tons of examples of having to put it all in the bank and filling out reports and telling the government, why did you have it, where did you get it from? All of those things are going to happen. They're going to limit your ability to access what you believe is your money. Not, keep telling you that. Right, and all these things, and we're seeing it happen. And, you know, we used to say, ah, you know, it's just Argentina. (laughs) Or it's just Venezuela. Right? But but now, every year, seemingly, what is a country year? Oh, it's just Cyprus. Oh, it's just Greece. Oh, it's just Argentina. Oh, it's just Venezuela. And it spreads, and it spreads, and it spreads. And, you know, you see week after week, month after month, Oh, it's Illinois, it's Chicago, then it's New York. Wait, now it's California, now it's Massachusetts. Oh, wait, now it's Kentucky. And the list seemingly never ends. And so you can buy flakes. You can buy, nah, wait, we don't sell it that way. You buy bars, right? One ounce gold bars. That's a cheaper entry point. By the way, you go below a one-ounce bar, it actually gets a lot more expensive. But a one-ounce bar, you can buy a one-ounce bar. The the thing that I don't like about the bars, and I'll just lay it out to you real simple, you sell me back more than $10,000 worth, and I have to 1099 you, anything that you save buying at most, bars bid way back, way, way back not a good way to go it looks cool and i know some people like that's their their uh image in their mind these big gold bricks that you see on tv you you don't buy gold that way i mean if you're maybe warren buffett does billionaires can afford to buy one of those bricks i mean a good delivery bar is 400 ounces of, of of gold i mean if you got you know a little over half a million bucks then, then I guess you could get one. You used to be able to get those delivered, believe it or not. Can't do it anymore. They won't do it. Why? Because there's not that much gold out there, and they're worried to break the Comex. I'll tell you all the other ways and why we recommend ours when we return. 800-951-0592. Talking about different ways to do things. Bars are cheap. So, I mean, again, got a, at least a one ounce and above. Anything below that gets real pricey. But they're not that cheap. It's not like you could buy it for, you know, $1,200. Right? It, it, you're, you're, you maybe save $10, or maybe if you bought a huge amount, maybe you save $20 for an ounce. That's it. When you go to sell it back, you lose way more than that. It's actually it's just not a good way to go. I, do we sell some? Yes, yeah, we do. Not very many. A handful. Will I buy them? I will. I'll buy them. As long as they're stamped by a recognizable guy. That's the other part, too, right? You know, Bob's gold mine. Well, I don't know Bob. Sorry. If it's not wrapped in its little, because they come in the, the wrapped in a little plastic thing pressed in there, if it's not in that, all bets are off. Then you're talking about really getting taken to the cleaners, if you will, because no one wants them without that on there. So that's the least favorite way of doing it. 
Then you've got your foreign gold, right? Your Maple Leafs, your Krugerrands. You got your Sovereigns and your Franks. You got your Philharmonics, right? You got all of, you know, the China's pandas, right? And uh, Australia and all their coins. The American Gold Eagle, throw the buffalo in there as well. Right? Those are all bullion coins. Doesn't matter the date on them either, just in case you were wondering. They're all bullion. And when the government, remember, from 1933 all the way through 1971, you were not allowed to own gold in this country. It was banned. Right? The only ones that could, a dentist, right, because of the gold film today, right, that wouldn't even be an option. And if you needed it for some form of art, <laughs> so I don't know, you're making a gold statue of some sort. And, and, of course, jewelers were allowed, right, to make your jewelry. That was it. You weren't allowed. Where there, there would be no Patriot Trading Group during that time because you couldn't own it. If you were caught trying to, you know, black market yourself with gold, 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine – Bring that to the forefront of today. Ten years in prison and, you know, probably be a $10 million fine, right? See see where I'm getting? They make it. They're not dumb. They're going to get it. So from 71 until 1980 through 1985, you could own gold. You just couldn't have U.S. gold outside of some of the old 20s that were left from over in Europe. But we didn't mint gold. And then we created the Gold Eagle Act. It was actually in 1985. We started minting gold and silver again in 1986. And in there, they said all U.S. gold minted prior to 1933 was now a collectible. And they made that distinction for a reason. Remember I always told you it was illegal for you to own gold from 33 to 71, unless you were a dentist or a jeweler, or maybe you were an artist and you needed some. There was one other way you could own it without having to be a dentist, a jeweler, or an artist. And that was if you had collectibles now is that loophole going to be there again the next time around I do not know they said all other forms are considered to be bullion as an example all of the coins I listed uh, the maple leaf the Krugerrand the gold eagle the buffalo you can put those in your IRA can't put old 20s in there why not gold? You can put gold bars in there. Can't put in the old 20s. Can't put in that collectible stuff. And they didn't say collectible after Mint State 63, 4, 5 or some other wild thing that these guys on the internet said. But you can buy the bullion stuff. The gold eagles the Maple Leafs, the Krugerrand. Right now, they're not as cheap as the old 20s, but in normal markets, and it's getting closer now, but in normal markets, maybe you could save 10 bucks. Again, not a lot. The foreign stuff, the Krugerrands, the Maple Leafs, the, the Sovereigns, and all that stuff, you sell back more than $10,000 you're going to get a 1099. If you have gold eagles, you won't, right? You can U.S. gold, you can sell back and not be 1099. Same thing with bars, 1099 over 10 grand. It's always this 10 grand rule. Eh? It's so arbitrary. And then you have the old.
older pre-1933 U.S. gold, which is where we like to be, because it is the most private, right? Kind of like a gold eagle. You can buy it, sell it, trade it, and not be a 1099. But you have the, I'm not saying we, we don't know yet. We're going to find out. I wish I could say, hey, that's my kid's problem, but unfortunately I'm not that old. Uh, and I don't, I hopefully won't be dead yet. It's going to be all of our problem, and I'd like the chance of possibly being able to keep it. Because remember what happened after 1933, they raised the price 75%. 800 592 final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. So now you know why. We love the pre-33. Why we don't think you should pay extra for, uh, you know, the rare and unusuals, unless you really know what you're doing. And by the way, rare and unusual coins won't cost three or four or five hundred dollars more. <laughs> They'll cost five, ten, fifty, a hundred million dollars more. That's true rarity. So we like to stay to the low end because we want you to buy as much gold as possible. That's how you should do it. I like fractional gold because I'm worried. Listen, I, what's happening in Europe and in Paris and the caravans, right? All of there is unrest everywhere. Is war coming with China and Russia? Maybe. I'm hoping that that this will be an organized event, right? That it'll go, I guess, relatively well. But I've got a feeling people are not happy. So it's always good to have fractional material, especially when I put it on sale. Today we have five dollar liberties, and this is I'm going to tell you right now: gold, gold's at the higher end here. This is normally a price when gold's around twelve hundred. We come out with this price. We're going to go three hundred and fifty dollars after the show. I'll have it up online. I just got word I could get them. I was waiting three hundred and fifty dollars on U.S. five dollar liberties. Those are the old ones, eighteen sixty six to 1907, right? Think about it. There's not one in there that isn't, you know, 111 years or older, and they look fantastic. Listen, they're great great stuff. They're not bent. They're not worn flat. And you can buy them, sell them, trade them, and not have to worry about 1099s. And you know what? If you need to use it, it's a whole lot better than having one ounce. Having a quarter, hey, I didn't trade for a generator or trade for for whatever it may be. This is a great way to do it. Uh, $5 Liberties, $350 today at 800-951-0592. That is our toll-free number. And, again, I will have that up online here in about five minutes. Uh, So you can go to allamericangold.com and order online if you'd like. Uh, right now, the Dow's down about 350, uh, kind of a, a at least a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, we'll, we'll see where it ends up. Gold and silver, that's, that's hilarious. Gold's down 50 cents, 1246.50. Silver's down one penny, uh, $14.57 on silver today. By the way, 2018 and or 2019, U.S. Silver Eagles, 360 a roll. So throw some silver in there as well. Another way to great barter material. Uh, U.S. $5 Liberties, the old one. The collectibles, if you will. 350 bucks. That's actually cheaper, much cheaper than you could buy a, a new quarter ounce one. 800 951 0592. Again, get ready. Obviously, it's holiday time. Colorado. Don't forget, I'm going to be up there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. I hope to see you then.